the same it's like so the way you even it, there's a hole in the top. What do we think of this view? Uh, looks pretty good. No there's a hole. What do we think of the view? The Did we already adjust the camera? There's a hole in the top. Did you stand over there to talk to you? The smoke comes in. For sure. It's and like that, right? Because we have two presenters. We have two presenters. Oh. So we are live on Facebook. We're recording. I say we just kick it off. Let's go for it. Hey, here's your life. All right. Thanks. There's always technical stuff that we consume as well. Sorry. You guys see my screen? Now, there we are. Yes, so welcome good. to West Money Cups uh, Albuquerque, uh, caffeinating entrepreneurs uh, nationwide. <laughs> Orally, here we are. <laughs> not yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, right yet. Clicker's not working. Oh yeah, scan the QR code. Uh, win a free pen with three scans and a notebook with six. Don't miss out. Not working. Huh? Nope. Nope. Is it on? Oh, this is interesting. Kinda. You just can't reach wow. it. Okay, so um, we're trying to lower the barrier of uh, entry for entrepreneurs by giving access to uh, education, community resources, and authentic connections at One Million Cups. Uh, we do that through a next through a consistent national program. Uh, this is the Southwest. There's a lot of One Million Cups chapters here, and there's close to 200 across the whole country. Nine o'clock local time every Wednesday morning. Uh, next slide. Let me try it because I think it's working. There's just a little bit of a no. There it is. Okay, so here's our key pillars. Uh, we want presentations, not pitches. In a presentation, um, you are somewhat opening your uh, company up and exposing your challenges and vulnerabilities and asking for help. So it's you're not a flawless company. We're interested in authentic connections, not networking. Putting the time in to get to know somebody, figure out who they know, figure out what they know that you don't know, and vice versa. Uh, it's run for the community, by the community. The organizers are all volunteers. We're not spectacular altruists. We all get something out of it. And we're radically and intentionally inclusive. All kinds of entrepreneurs, all kinds of people, and all kinds of businesses are welcome at One Million Cups Albuquerque. Okay, uh, there's our mission statement, which I won't read. Basically, it says, uh, be nice. Uh, it, people are here to get an education. If you're talking to someone who knows less than you do about something, keep talking, and then try to figure out what they might know that you don't know and be polite. And if you can't do that, uh, spend Wednesday morning somewhere else. <laughs> yes. So uh, there we go. It's easy to apply to present. Uh, talk to any one of the organizers or go online and apply to present. Uh, we'll assign you a coach and we'll help you. Uh, we'll guide you into a one million cups format talk and make sure that you have a presentation that engages the audience and generates questions. Uh, that's our organizing team. I'm Paul Sauter with Equiseek. We have Lisa Atkins, who's been our host at, at Fat Pipe forever since inception, like eight years now, right? Sure. Eight years. Uh, Eric Reds Whitmore, uh, Adam Sparks Brechtel, and Sonia Dewing. So uh, wave hi, all you guys, and uh, go talk to those folks and tell them you want to present. Uh, we also like to thank our sponsors, Fat Pipe. It's been our home for low these eight years. Uh, Jason Cullen Photography, always making us look good, even in the era of screenshots. Uh, more than organized, organizing your stuff and your thinking and providing Kramer. Uh, Foundation for Sustainable Living, uh, our new coffee sponsor, uh, Noventum Custom Software with the donuts. And, and Vibe Solutions uh, is our tea and fruit sponsor. Tea and fruit sponsor. Yeah, okay, so you coffee haters, you know, you got something going. Now. All right, that's it, right? All right, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Sure. We're going to hand it over to maybe the next person. So we're going to move quickly today because we have two presenters, and we want to make sure they both have time. Franklin's going to come up and say a word about the Foundation for Sustainable Living. He's our new copy sponsor. Good morning, everybody. Found it appropriate to sponsor the coffee since I grew it in Costa Rica. Here's what? some here's some gold beans. Oh, no. Did I pull this out? We're good. So yeah, I grow this, you can pass this around or look at it. Uh, 
I smuggle this in in my suitcase. Most of our, we won't be drinking my coffee here because it's already exported to Italy. But I also brought along some cacao beans that we have right in the neighborhood. And in the little village I live in, uh, they're well known as the cradle of artisans in Costa Rica. So I brought just something. Very cool. Thank you. And that's it. I was told to be brief. We grow coffee. We have farm Costa Rica, coffee, avocados, citrus. And then here in the North Valley, we also have the farms. Thank you, Franklin. He's our coffee sponsor for a year. We really appreciate his support. Come on up, Don. This is Don with the Raven Media Group. And I love his story um, because he did things in life to accommodate being a dad, which is really cool. Hi, uh, as she stated, I'm Don with Raven Media Group. Um, so a uh, little bit about us. We're going to go through what the company does, a little bit of other stuff. Then we're going to go over the origin story, which actually why we started. So basically what we're talking about here in their kitchen doing some work. That's yeah, the participants on my mute. <laughs> So uh, we're gonna talk about uh, what we do, um, what our team looks like, and kind of go from there. Raven Media Group is, whoops, now it's gonna take that. I gotta go fast. Okay, so what Raven Media Group does, we're an audio video production company. Everything we do is online. So we teach our clients, individuals, how to start a podcast where we do stuff from basic editing all the way to you just sit your butt in a chair, you take care of everything else. Uh, so I wanna, I wanna emphasize that last part as far as us being an online company. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about here at the end. Okay. Uh, whoops, skipped past my awesome crew. Where's my crew at? I can't do that. I think your slides might be out of order. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we do podcasts. We do. Uh, we work with individuals, small businesses, companies, schools, nonprofits, in order to get their messaging out there. Uh, my crew is basically five people. Everybody else are, that works for us is subcontractors. So what we did right before the pandemic is we went ahead and we're uh, doing everything online. We worked with everybody. So when the pandemic hit, we actually were pretty stationed pretty well to be able to you know, follow through that and help everybody and their brother wanted to start a podcast. So we kind of grew from there. Uh, See here. I know there's a slide in here on your team. I saw. I know. It's a slide. Yeah. This is the videos that we do. Uh, so these are kind of some of the things we do. This was for a course we did. Um, it was a really fun project that we did, and we do stuff like that. Um, so uh, feeling a little off here because the slides are all over the place. So I'm just going to go ahead and wing it. Okay. Uh, that right there, that lady right there is one of our clients. She's also our in-house lawyer. So um, we always tell people, take care of your stuff because copyright is a huge mm -hmm. thing. And we've had clients that have lost their whole entire thing because of 30 seconds of a clip they, did, they didn't pay for. Mm -hmm. So we always tell people, take care of that. Um, and she's really good about helping. More on her. Uh, no, we keep going. There's, your There's team. my team. All right. So this was kind of a cool thing we had right before the pandemic. We had a nice little get together, um, and it was kind of cool to get everybody together. We haven't really been able to do that. The last thing we did was this when we had a big old bonfire and we made s'mores and we just kind of talked and. Kind of works out. So I like to do things to help our staff kind of just get away from work for a little bit. And that's one of the things we like to do here at Raven Media Group. 
Now let's get to the origin story of Raven Media Group. I think that is my next slide. There it is. I'm lucky enough to be a dad of two boys. Um, my 16 year old who's actually sitting in the audience right there, um, doesn't really take a lot of pictures. Um, so this is one of the few I have of my other one that does, and he loves taking pictures. So when we started Raven Media Group, it was kind of a, who here is an entrepreneur? Okay. Everybody starts their business and it didn't really start the way you thought it was going to start and it morphed into something else, right? And that's what happened with Raven. I had a successful consulting business. Uh, I have a doctorate in forensic psychology. When that little boy was born, I realized I did not want to do any of that stuff anymore. I want to spend time with my son, sons. Um, and so what I did was I sold that practice and I spent 24 seven from that little boy's inception till he started pre-K. And when that happened, I was doing a blog and I'm a horrible writer. <laughs> so I realized, hey, what's the best thing I do? I'm a really good talker. So let's start a podcast. Didn't know anything about podcasting, started that. And that morphed into getting sponsors. So I had to start an LLC. So Raven was hatched that day from that. And I really got started when I was sitting in a parking lot at a pre-K school the first day he started pre-K. And I was like, what am I gonna do for three hours? And then I was sitting there going, what am I do for three hours today? What am I gonna do next year when he goes for eight hours? I think, sometimes they do eight hours, right? They still do that, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I decided I've got to do something. So I dove headlong into Raven and this is where we're at. So that was nine years ago. Um, and so we've been going pretty steadily since then. Um, we like the model of we can teach anybody how to do it. It's just a time thing. I can teach anybody how to edit, and, uh, edit a podcast or edit a video. It's time. We all know one thing we can't make more of is time. And if you're a business owner, you have to know what to do with your time. And if you're spending it on doing something like triplets, doing an edit of a podcast, you're taking away time that you're actually going to make money for that because you're not making money doing that. So that's where we come in. So the next thing is the pandemic started and all that. And then we had a lot of work, but I have zero clients here in Albuquerque. Um, I have clients all over the world. Um, matter of fact, I'm a little groggy eyed because I had to do a recording session with our friends uh, over in the future in Australia. Um, so it was morning for them. It was not morning for me. Uh, so our actually it was midday for them. It was not morning for me. So uh, it was pretty late. So uh, what we wanted to do, and this is where Million Cups came in, is a couple weeks back, we had that individual that had a photographic studio. And we thought, when we've been thinking about this for about a year, what do we do about opening something here where people could come in, create a studio to where we have a different, different set of backgrounds, stuff like that. They can do uh, blogging, they can do a podcast and we could help them do that. So rent studio time or have us do a lot of that stuff. So here's what we're kind of asking for you. Here's our question. Our question is, and you guys are gonna serve as our kind of you know, real time focus group. Is this something that's viable here in Albuquerque? Is it something that we can collab with a working space like this? Is it something where we have to get a building and rent a space out to create stuff like that? So my question for you folks today is, is it something that sounds like it would work for somebody here? Is it sounds like something we can build on and kind of go forward? Like I said, we have a lot of business online, but if we can get something here, I would like to kind of build from there. So my name again is Don Jackson. I'm with the Raven Media Group and sorry for my mixed up slides. If you have questions, please form a line here. Don't forget to introduce yourself. We'll also take questions from people online. I'm gonna take the slides down. That we can see the audience. Awesome. Hi, I'm Brian Steiner of Momentum Custom Software. Um, you know, I just wanted to say that when you were caught up in your slide order, it was not interesting. And then when you started talking, it just like totally caught my attention. So I, uh, I thought you did a really good job when you uh, 
started improvising. So, um, you know, my main suggestion would be um, to find a collaborator, right? I have been around, I've been a member of tons of different co-working spaces and half of them collapse. They're just not economically viable for one reason or another. Lisa can tell you about that. But if you can team up with Fat Pipe or one of the other places that's steady and get some space, you know, maybe a little bit cheaper, get some kind of a deal with them, you know, your capital outlies can be way less than if you sign a five-year commercial lease. So that would be my only recommendation is to take a look at the history of co-working in Albuquerque and see a graveyard. So, <laughs> Uh, guess what? Stuart's going to talk with Don, so we're already... <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Walt, uh, founder, chief scientific officer of Equiseek. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So uh, my question is from the other side of that problem. Uh, what's your kind of uh, median customer or your ideal customer? How much do they end up spending with you and how big, or if you don't want to say that, how big is that company? So um, if... The slide deck you kids see, we do consulting work. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, uh, US government actually wants you to know stuff about them. So they actually started podcasting. The US Postal Service has a podcast. The CIA has a podcast. We consulted on both those to get them up and running. Um, so we go really big and we go to an individual that's just going, I don't wanna spend time editing this. I'm a this is my hobby, can you edit it for us? So that would be kind of our scope. Right. Um, as far as um, who that who the right fit would be, it's whoever wants to do this, and we want to make it to where it's going to be worth the time. Because um, I can tell you, you can go online and find anybody um, on Fiverr to edit your podcast and your videos. The problem you're going to run into is the language barrier because the people that are really cheap are not here. So you're having to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because they're using a translator. So that, again, comes back to time. So for us, it's it's all about trying to mitigate that time for you to sure. slow it down and, and do that. So for us looking at this and for you speaking over there, the one thing we're looking at for, for like co collab stuff is a lot of them are kind of built like this. So we're going to have to try to find a way to, to silence that noise. So yeah. yep. that's kind of hopefully an answer. Yeah, yeah. So that basically, you know, how, how many clients are there in the Albuquerque area yeah. for you? And how can you displace their current providers? Yeah, that's what you come down. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think it's your turn, Sonia. Cool. Well, okay, so I have two things, which is number one, if you had a space where people could come in and record, I I think your target might be publishers like myself. So I have a space to record. I do a podcast um, and I'm working on audiobooks, but I do not want to bring my authors into my bedroom <laughs> to see my scruffy setup. Um, so if there was a place here in Albuquerque that I could rent and bring authors and work on their audiobooks, I would love that. Um, my, my question is if, so as a podcaster, do you help people um, market their podcast? Yes. Cool. And how do you do that? Uh, <laughs> so we do it through a lot of things. One of the things we do that we tell you it's free, that you don't have to really work that hard, is go into a medium of people that do your podcasting. I don't know if I should look here or here. Um, but go into something that's, that's kind of your kind of arena. Be a guest on that and try to kind of do it that way. That is really good marketing value so you don't really have to pay anything for it all you're doing again is paying your time and being on a podcast the other thing is um you can do a lot on social media the one thing that we like to do with our clients is what we call um uh an audio or audio or videogram you can put it on there it's just a quick clip of your podcast basically the most interesting thing that you can find Put that in there and then share it with the social medias and stuff like that and have it with your guests do the same thing do all the work for them so all they have to do is copy and paste people are more willing to share if you do it that way hopefully that's helpful thank you thank you i didn't mean for you to give away your secret sauce though <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. Huh? That's, that's not secret you're in your next good morning um good morning. i have worked with a podcasting company last year that uh talked a really good game and i had some reservations but i got to retain copyright so i was like all right we'll go for it 
and it turned into a nightmare. And then I had to replace it with an, um, another guy who's doing much better re-editing things and everything, but he doesn't do, he's not local and he's, he doesn't do a few of the things I need. It sounds like you do. So I'm totally interested in speaking to you, um, after this as well, but I think, um, I'd love to hear your take on how to find sponsors. So, or is that something you help with or? So we do that. So a little bit about podcasting, like podcasting has been around since like the early 2000s. Yeah. Except it was super hard to do that. It's not as easy as it is now with all this software and great gadgets that we have. But the one thing that hasn't caught up is everybody's trying to use the radio model for advertising for podcasting. Right. And it doesn't really work because it kind of works like, uh, TiVo kind of a thing where they're not really getting stuff in real time. So they're still trying to use the model of uh, your CPM uh, for that. And I think it's like $5 depending on how big you are. Um, if you're Joe Rogan, then you can get those huge ones. Um, and I always tell clients, you're not. <laughs> um, so, Unless you're Meghan Markle. <laughs> so look low, look low. So if you're getting sponsorships in the range of, we always tell clients, bake it into your podcast. Like there's platforms that you can go use that actually already give you, uh, they do the hard work, but they're also getting a pretty good cut of what they're putting in for an ad spot. And you also don't get to pick who that ad sponsor is. So if you're going to do it yourself, we always tell them, don't give them just your download numbers because that's not your full audience. Your full audience is um, your social network, your uh, guests that you have, bring those in and then give them that picture. And then the other thing we tell them is don't just do podcasting by itself, do vlogging as well. Vlogging is a video podcast. That also helps by doing three things. One, it helps by giving them a visual way to see you, then they hear the audio. And then the other thing you have is your show notes now is how Google finds you. So that's your SEO right there. So that's a three, kind of a 3D model there. So as far as that, yes, we teach people how to do that. It's not easy. Um, when you first start out, you have to at least have, you give me 50 to 60 downloads and we'll probably get you something. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Sue, Velosny, you're next. Thanks. Good morning. Well, actually, Miriam asked, or I'm sorry, Sonia asked some of my questions, but this one is just for you. Um, what was your first podcast on? What was your subject? So my very first podcast with, was with a fellow friend of mine. He's also a doctor, a uh, doctor in education. His name is Christopher Lewis. We started a podcast called The Dad Spotlight. We talked about, he had two girls, I have two boys. So we talked about being dads. So we had people on about all the struggles we have as parents. Because it wasn't just about being dads, it's about being parents. So we had uh, a weekly, I think we had 260 episodes. Um, since I started this, I have no time to do my own podcast anymore, which is a shame because I actually like doing it. Um, but that was my first podcast. And the subject matter that I, is near and dear to my heart because I, I like the two knuckleheads I have. I love that. <laughs> I, I asked that question because it seems that you started out in a very specific place and now you're, it seems quite broad and I'm not that um, educated in the podcast world. I've never done a podcast. So how, what do you think your target market is? She's confused on your model. I think she is confused on my model. So here's the thing we always tell people, um, our job is to help you get your message out there. So it could be, there's a podcast out there that is three minutes long and they drop twice a week. There's a podcast out there that is eight hours long. He drops every day. He is a psycho because um, I don't know, but he gets 15,000 downloads. So there's somebody out there that's there. And I always tell people, this is our job is to help you get your message out there, being about your product, being about your brand, bring about you as an individual. We're just getting, I like raisins out there. So there's things out there. There's a target audience for everybody. For us, you all are our audience. There is not one person that we're looking to. I mean, we've turned down some work before just because we didn't align you know, philosophically and that happens. But you as a business owner can make those choices. That's what's great about this. 
So as far as the target audience, you got a voice and you're not gonna offend me, then yeah, sure, let's go for it. So Sue, so he helps other people do their podcast. He doesn't yeah. have his own podcast. No, not anymore. Jason, come on up. Got it. Uh, Jason, Hi. Jason Collin Photography. Um, one other potential uh, customer for your, if you ever get a physical in-studio audio space is the voice acting. You can come there and uh, record there. Yeah. Or you can perform there and send them to me. So yeah. I have several clients in the past year or something who've been voice actors coming for photography. So I think there are some in the city that could be another source of income. Physical space. Awesome. Thank you. And you're committed to the beard, right? Because it's on the shirt. I so am. Committed. This this is my. So, um, our lawyer, who used to be our business partner, said, "You're the face of the business." And I'm like, "Oh God, no." <laughs> and so I leaned into it. So we created a merch that has my face on it. This wow. beard is way better than mine, but. <laughs> <there's> my. <laughs> so I'm Michael McDonald. I'm a retired guy that does not understand your industry. But one thing I do know is, is that New Mexico is investing heavily in the film industry. State is. And your question came back to, is this viable? And maybe one of the viability points is, you know, is the infrastructure going to support you that draws in people that are the creatives that would be wanting to be in Albuquerque, wanting to stay in Albuquerque or wanting to come to Albuquerque? And have you investigated the uh, film industry like the state and whether or not they would support you in their ways. So we did a little bit. Um, what we got word back was they're more looking at bigger budgets and we're, you folks are not gonna have those budgets. So, and I wouldn't be your guy even if you had that budget. So, um, but yeah, so we looked into that, but it's not really there. And so the one thing that we have to look at is, like I said earlier, when the pandemic started, everybody wanted to do a podcast. Now that's, started to fall down. So now we've got to see how that evens out and if that that is going to be sustainable moving forward. Thanks. All right, I'll, I'll wrap it up since we have another presenter. Don, we have two final questions. Okay. The first is red or green. Oh, red. Nice. And what's the one thing this community can do for you? Let us know. Let us know if you guys want us to hear and we can make this a viable thing. Like I said, my job and our producer's job and people that work for us is to get your voice out there. Um, so when that lady said, you know, what's that audience? You have to ask yourself what that is because if the CIA and the post office are doing it, <laughs> I think everybody can do it. Nice. So as we, I'll make a couple of announcements as we switch over to the other slides. We've got Eric in the back. Actually, if you'll just start coming up so we can slide it over. Oh my heavens, wait a second. You wrapped it up so nicely quickly. I, I love it. You, we're, we're like two minutes ahead of schedule. So I'm just gonna do a little pat dancing right here. Um, let's see, hi, I'm Eric Friends Whitmore. I'm one of the co-hosts, co-organizers of this fine event. Uh, so I'll share a couple of different events and activities that are happening in and around town that you might want to be aware of. Uh, first of all, this week, um, going out of town for a second, uh, Start of Las Cruces has a meetup at uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, so if you're in the Las Cruces neighborhood, there's a lot of stuff going on down there with uh, Arrowhead and other, other different events and activities, but uh, Start of Las Cruces is a cool little meetup. Um, also on Thursday night, if you head north to Santa Fe, uh, Entrepreneur Storytime, they've spoken here, uh, talked a little bit about some of their different events, but they are working with Santa Fe matchmaking. So I don't know how many people in the audience really need some assistance with matchmaking to learn how that works. But they've got a special event taking place on Thursday at the Crafty Cafe, and that's from 6.30 p.m. Um, let's see, on Saturday, Saturday is the deadline for Santa Fe Innovates. Um, and John Mertz has spoken here a couple of times. Santa Fe Innovates is basically, it's a free pre-accelerator. They've got a good set of mentors and coaches. They've got good programming. And what they're there to do is you sign up, the payment is all your own work to try and make sure that your company is, uh, has a viable business model. They give you good feedback. They have a little demo event at the end, and that, that'll get you going. Uh, last two things that I'll mention is the 12th through the 14th is New Mexico Cyber and Space Symposium. Right? Is this Cybersecurity Month? Who's that last month? I don't know. Every month is Cybersecurity and a couple of other things. But they've got a cool event. This is from CNM that's taking place the 12th through the 14th. Um, if you're interested in broadband equity, 
Uh, Code for America is working with different Code for America brigades around the country to help uh, folks find out where there's broadband access and where there is. So we're gonna be doing a little local event on Saturday the 15th. The last thing I'll mention is, and I'll also do a little bit of an introduction to I'll just, you know, just slink off. I have here. one more event before oh, you, or can I? Act, please, you wanna slide that in now? Our sure. own Barbara Dawson oh, right, is doing a workshop here at Fat Pipe BBQ on October 20th at 1130. It's an in-person only. We are not going to Zoom it because it's interactive and you need to be here. It's called Authentic Communications and Sales Strategies for Marketing a Small Business. So um, please feel free to join us. We'd love you to log in on Eventbrite and register, but mm -hmm. if not, just show up. Cool. And I've got that on my list. We'll send out a list of all these things Thank to you. the main mailing list and also to meet up. Last thing I was going to mention is the unique, uh, UNM Business and Economic Summit. That's pretty much an all-day event that takes place on the 26th. But there's a lot of different folks from throughout the states, uh, some key local programs. Uh, Native American entrepreneurship and others. Uh, again, that's the 26th, and I want to say that that's taking place at um, at the Rainforest Building right across the street. All right, talking about the power of community, a lesson, but you know, I always do a little bit of that. So one of the things I just wanted to mention is, in terms of working with other folks, we oftentimes get referrals. That's one of the best ways we have of getting different people to speak. Uh, so I heard about an upcoming event. It was like, oh, that sounds cool. How do we possibly do it? And then learned a little bit about the company that Erica has and found out a little bit about her journey to getting there. So I thought that would be a great story to share with you all. I'm at 931. So I will welcome Erica over here to talk a little bit about her business and an upcoming event. Thank you. Awesome. Well, so um, my name is Erica Burns and I'm the owner of Pure Benets LLC, my proprietary process called the 100K Pathway and also my signature program called Profit Pathways. And so what I do is I actually help female entrepreneurs to grow their business to six figures and beyond. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit about my process and to share with you how to finally get to 100K without needing another offer, social media tactic, or marketing funnel. Who would like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. So where am I pointing? You have to get a little bit behind me or maybe so, but I just see you down. Oh, you do. Okay. Um, so, hi, I'm Erica. I just wanted to give you a little bit of my backstory real quick. So, um, I was a cardiology PA for actually 14 years, and you can see here in this picture, it's all gowned up to see a very sick patient. And in the world of medicine, um, it's very fulfilling when you can help people, but it's also very frustrating and sad when you don't help people get the results that you want. And so, um, you know, what I realized is that I wanted to help people before they got sick. I love helping people, but wanted to help before they got sick. Does anybody actually know the number one cause of heart disease? Stress. Stress. <laughs> stress. And what's one of the main contributors of stress in this country? <laughs> What did you say? I'm a little dry. Uh, financial. Yeah, financial. Money. Relationship. Money. And so what I decided to do, actually, is I... It's my fault. I got off the screen. Okay. So in July of 2018, I quit my job, and I started my own marketing agency. And the reason is, is because I saw a lot of executives, a lot of CEOs who were extremely stressed out which led to heart disease and other things. You know, I ran a congestive heart failure clinic and so saw a lot of sick people. So I thought that that was going to be the best way to help people before they got sick. Okay, so in just three months, I was actually able to completely replace my six-figure income, um, which was fantastic, but um, I was a little bit naive because I thought you know, because I knew a lot about marketing and because I was able to do it, I thought, you know, this is going to be an easy thing to do to help other people to achieve similar results. And though we had a lot of success with um, business owners, I worked with a lot of medical practices, a lot of solopreneurs. And, um, you know, what's interesting is that I could implement the same marketing strategy, the same exact funnel, campaigns. For one med spa, let's just say our functional medicine practice, and somebody who provides the same service, 
provide it in a different area and they get completely different results. And even, you know, sometimes some would have great big budgets and some would have smaller budgets and sometimes the smaller budgets would win. So I started to kind of think about this. Why was it that not everybody got the same result? And I started to go back to thinking about healthcare and why, could it, why was it that, you know, you take, let's just say a man in his fifties who has similar past medical history like diabetes and hypertension, you put them on the same medications, some get great results and recover, some don't. And what I realized is that it actually has nothing to do with the tactics. It all has to do with in, and you know, and so what I, what did you say? True. Yeah. Very true. Yes. yes. <laughs> and so what I did is I actually changed the way I ran my business. I stopped implementing the tactics. And what I did is I started to coach entrepreneurs and I sort of, you know, I worked with solopreneurs all the way to multi-million dollar organizations, teaching them my proprietary process called the 100K Pathway which is also what I refer to as my inside out approach to growth. And this is what really helped the majority of my clients get to six figures and beyond. And so what I wanna talk about briefly is just the reason that most people stay stuck where they don't, where they don't wanna be whether it be in business or in their life, is that they continue to focus on their reality. So how can I get more clients? How can I increase the numbers in my bank account? How can I increase my social media following? Those are all external things. Those are all within our reality. But what the truth is, is that the results that we have, the reality that we have, is all based upon the pathways that are running our lives. And in fact, the income that we have, the impact that we're making, and the freedom we have are all directly correlated to the pathways that are running our lives. And so when I talk about pathways, oh, well, and so when we run this way, it's literally like Groundhog Day, right? So we can do different things, try different things, continue to focus on the reality, but what happens is we get the same results over and over again. And as a result, you know, I don't have to tell you that this leads to burnout, fear, stress, and just quite frankly, a feeling of not even sure what the heck to do next. How many of you have experienced this? Yeah, for sure. I have to. And so in order to create the income, impact, and freedom you crave, and in order to get to 100K or any, you know, income that you want, it's not about implementing the right marketing campaigns, having the perfect website, posting on social media, or even creating the right funnels. Because if you were to do all those things, and when we do all those things, it's a top, what we're doing is, again, we're focusing on the reality when we need to be focusing on the pathways. So I want to take a minute just to explain to you what these pathways are. So within our brains, we have neural pathways that are firing every single second with new thoughts and ideas. And before we get into this a little bit more, I wanna do just a very quick exercise. So in a second, I'm gonna show you a picture and I want you to just tell me how many pink balloons there are, okay? So how many pink balloons? Okay, how many green balloons? How many orange balloons? Wow. <laughs> Nobody knows, right? Okay, um, so what happens in that exercise is what happens is I said pink balloons. And so right away what happens is our reticular activating systems, which is at our brainstem, focused on pink balloons because in that moment, that was what it interpreted as being important. And so it blocked out the other colors, just like it's blocking out your success. And so, um, what we have is that, you know, you have all these ideas throughout these ideas when you goal plan or when you set goals and plan your day. And so, you know, you, even in your life, you may want to exercise. You may want to get to 25,000 a month. You know, you may have all these things that you want to do. But if we take exercise, for example, um, exercise is a great example because most people have experienced it. So, you know, let's just say you want to get, you want to lose 10 pounds. So you say, 
okay, starting Monday, I'm going to start exercising, right? And you feel really good about it. And maybe you start off strong, but then what happens? You get the, you fall off, right? The excuses start coming. The distractions start coming, right? Why? Because your brain says, nope, this is not who we are. We are not somebody who exercises frequently. We are not somebody who makes $25,000 per month. And so the brain, specifically your neural pathways that are dominant will block out you from actually achieving those in your reality. So what's happening is that the pathways that are running our lives are called our survival pathways. And those pathways developed even before the age of seven. And so when we're young, anything that we hear about business, success, money, anything, we're our self-worth, we, it just goes into our brain like a sponge. We have no filter to be able to say, no, that's wrong, yes, that's right. And so those pathways continue to develop in our lives and they in turn are responsible for the results that we have in our lives. And so what's important to know is because of that, your business, our business is quite literally on brain autopilot. And so, this is why when it comes to creating a plan and taking action, if you're operating from the survival pathway, which most people are, you'll continue to get the same results and experience the same reality, no matter what you do or try. And so the only way to fix this is with this process called the 100K pathway. So I'm gonna quickly just go over this. So first and foremost, you have to activate your profit pathway because what got you to where you are in your life and in your business can never get you to where you want to go. And so in order to change, in order to get different results, we have to create new neural pathways. And then um, step two is once we do that, then we start attracting our ideal clients and our ideal income. And we, we do this through a process called subconscious shifting. Mm -hmm. And what we do is what, when we start understanding survival pathways, we can then start to see the same pathways running in our clients' lives and in our prospects' lives. Has anybody had an objection? Has anybody ever gotten an objection in their business? I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I can't afford it, blah, blah, blah. What you have to realize is that those are not objections to what you have to offer. Those are quite literally automated responses from their survival pathways. So I teach my clients actually how to shift their clients and their prospects out of survival pathway. <laughs> that's okay. So when you do that, that's when you start to experience fewer objections, increased client attraction and retention, improved client results, increased income, increased referrals, and so much more. And then the third and final step is that once we do these things, then we need to automate your success. And I'm not talking about an automated funnel. I'm talking about actually habituating your success so that just like you get your cup of coffee in the morning without even thinking about it, success then starts to become your new normal. Okay. And so when we do that, this allows you to finally start gaining the traction and the clarity that you need to become what I call a freedom founder. You see, we all start as profit seekers. We all start by trying to do the things that we can do to grow our business and make more money. But when we implement these three things and when we have this knowledge, it allows us to gain freedom because we know the truth. We know that there's nothing wrong with us. We know that there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. It's just a brain-based process that's running in the background. And so when we change that, and when we know how to do that, that changes our reality. And so when we incorporate all three of these, what happens then is then we allow the brain to no longer act as a record of the past, but as a pathway to the future. And so again, just to sum up, in order to get to 100K and beyond, it's not about changing your offers, spending more on ads, or even trying a new social media tactic. Those are all secondary, right? You have to start with the proper foundation first and start operating from a profit pathway. And so um, until you start activating your profit pathway, you know, that's the only way to 
increase the income impact and freedom you crave. And as long as you continue to operate from a survival pathway, no matter what you do or try will ever produce the results that you want. So then how do you activate your profit pathway? Well, we don't have time for that today. However, um, I am actually hosting um, the Profit Summit for Female Entrepreneurs, November 11th and 12th. And so we're gonna dive deep into how to know what your survival pathway is, how to start activating your profit pathway. Um, we're gonna have a ton of amazing speakers, including Gabriel Fernandez and Katara back there from State Employees Credit Union, talking about um, you know, cash flow management in uncertain times. This summit is all about money and it's going to be you know, an extremely impactful event. And so my ask for you all is that if you know any female entrepreneurs who could benefit from this, who are looking to grow their income and to create the impact that they want, um, to invite them. Can you move that out of the way so they can see the link? This right here. Just move that up. So yeah, so you can, <laughs> um, yeah. to learn more to, you know, to learn more about the event, you can either scan that QR code with your camera, just take a picture of it, or right here, airprints.com forward slash profit dash summit. So that's it. I will put that in the, uh, I will put that in the chat. So let's see. So for folks who in the room have got questions, please come on over here. Um, we have a little bit of time, so we hopefully we won't necessarily do too many follow-up questions and things like that, but that'll be good. So one big question though is, so I know that you've got like a couple different, I'm wondering how all the different package works together. So I know we, I mean, we said some things about funnels and I know it's not all about funnels and I appreciate the mindset, but I'm curious, like, what are the different main chunks of your business and how do those work together? Um, what do you mean? The, the so for instance, somebody comes and they say, hey, I, um, I need help. Mm -hmm. um, they, they come to your website. What's the first thing that you're going to plug them into? Or what's yeah. the first thing you recommend? Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that is important is to identify what those hidden six figure blocks mm -hmm. are, right? And so we work through a process together um, mm -hmm. that I help them to uncover that. And once you make the unseen seen, mm -hmm. then you're able to start understanding, okay, cool. Now I understand why I'm where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that I actually want to create? And so then we go through this together, that becomes the foundation for their mm -hmm. profit pathway. And then we go into you know, the next step, which is um, attract. And then we teach them high ticket selling through subconscious shifting and you know learning all of those things. So we it's a, literally a strategic approach to help them grow their business. Yeah. So Eric, just a follow up. So basically, so you go to your website, you plug in, it's a one on one. Oh, okay. So I understand. I'm a one on one client with you. Yeah. So I have um, I do have some one on one. Um, the majority of my clients are in. Uh, what's called Profit Pathways. That's my signature program, which is a group program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do do one on one. And if so, it's, as a group program, is that something that kind of works as a cohort? Are people just kind of meet in any moment, or how does, how does that work? Yeah, yeah so um, there's a portal that has all the educational training in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do four live group coaching sessions oh, a week okay. with me on Zoom. Um, I have two clients here actually, but the remainder, like Don, huh. they're out of um, the state. They're all over the country and in Canada. So, yeah, cool. Hey, questions? Eric, no, we no do have a, what's that? We do have a question. Uh, Sue has a question for her. Excellent. So let's go to Sue online, and then if anybody else has questions, you come over here. Hi. So this is really fascinating to me, and. Um, and maybe I will attend that two-day summit. But my question is, personally, I'm so focused on and so busy with my current clients that I just tell myself I don't have time to look for future clients. How do I break that cycle? Yeah, um, so that's a really good question. So most people believe that they're too busy. Why? Because our survival pathway wants to believe that, right? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the first thing to do to break that cycle is to have that awareness, to understand that, you know, there might be something if, because looking for new clients is going to mean that you could potentially grow your income. 
right? That you can potentially grow your clientele. So there's something there that's limiting you. So whether that be, and sorry, I don't know where it was. I think it's here. But uh, the, the main thing to ask yourself is, what am I scared of? Like, why, you know, is there something that I'm, uh, that I'm afraid of with regards to increasing my income? Is there something that I'm scared of with getting more clients? For example, maybe it's that it means that you and your family have less time together. Maybe that's a subconscious belief that you have. And so again, first, you know, we can get into this, but the first and foremost thing to do is to just gain this awareness saying, okay, I want to grow my business. That's really what I want, but I keep telling myself I don't have the time. Obviously those are not in alignment, right? And so you've got to ask yourself what's more important to you. And if building your business and reaching more clients is most important, then you've got to start, you know, saying, okay, I know that this is my survival pathway that's just telling me this. So therefore I need to start focusing on just getting these clients. And in, at first it's going to be extremely uncomfortable um, and it's going to be tough, right? You're going to get a lot of internal dialogue that says, no, you shouldn't do this. No, you really don't have the time. You're going to get more distractions because your RAS, again, the reticular activating system will do everything that it can to convince you that you truly do not have time. So again, the flip side is just to continue to give yourself that supporting evidence that you actually do want to grow and that you do have the time. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah. Hi. Hello. My name is Ava. Hi, Ava. And you did a fantastic presentation. Oh, thank you. I'm a holistic health practitioner. Oh, I love it. You know it. Yes. That's why I was back. Yes. yes. Right um, it's kind of funny because I remember in the days when I was trying to hustle for some money mm -hmm. and reading all the books like Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. And it's really about mind over matter. Mm -hmm. But I think we've just gone along further now where we can understand about the brain, its chemistry and yeah. the work with the brain. My question is for you, sometimes it can be more than just trying to override that survivor instinct or the mm -hmm. RAS yeah. activity. Mm -hmm. How do you have, or do you have anything in, um, in your program to help ladies who are actually going through viable and real situations and it's not just about the survival these the actual symptoms and uh, calamities they're going through. yes so first and foremost um 100 so what we have to you know in the viable things the res will give you viable scenarios for example if you feel like your car is not trustworthy right you're gonna have examples of how your car breaks down, right? You're gonna to continue to experience things like that because you're like, see, I have bad luck. My car doesn't work very well because your RAS is continuing to try to give you supporting evidence. So with those viable experiences, yes, it's real, but we have to get to the foundation to actually change what we know in our brain to be true so that we experience less of those conversations and our RAS starts giving us more supporting evidence of the things that we actually want. So you gave the picture of the groundhog day. <coughs> yeah. And so it continues mm -hmm. until you do something to stop that. And that's the process. Correct. Of, of getting money. Correct. Because again, so many people, the majority of people are so focused on the reality. You know, what I see right now in my bank account, what I see right now in the audience, what I see right now in terms of how many clients I have, we can't think like that, right? Because what we have to realize is that what we're seeing right now is a reflection of thoughts, beliefs, patterns, and pathways that, have, that has created that reality. So to create a new reality, we have to go back to the foundation. Thank you yes. so much. Nice to meet you, Ava. Any other questions from the floor in here? All right. Well, in that case, I will ask. We've got the final sort of two questions we got. First of all, red or green? Um, red always. Red always. Wow. Except, wow. So well, um, except green chili stew. That's the only okay. one in second. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate the clarification. I think that's very useful. Uh, 
I see. And the other thing is, how can we as a community, I think you've already asked, but but how can we as a community, what can we as a community do to help you continue to grow your business and yeah. make this happen? I think the main thing that, you know, my ask and that would just be extremely um, helpful is just if you know of any female entrepreneurs or you are a female entrepreneur who wants to grow and scale your business, again, my whole goal, my whole mission is to end financial suffering. That's the whole point of what I do. Um, and so if we can just help, if you can help to spread the word for this event so that we can help more people, um, that would be amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you joining us. Let's see, and then Erica, Don, um, we'll be around for a little bit more. We've got some additional speakers there. Uh, I will just go ahead, unless we've got any final comments. I'd like to now. know how many people oh, yeah, yeah. are here for the first time. Raise your hands high so I can count. Really? Just two? Just two. I see new faces, but you know I'm getting old, so I know that. How about online? Do you have any people? I didn't online? check online. I think we had somebody who left um Jesse earlier. Oh yeah, and he was from out of town. Oh, that was I'm not sure. Sure. Rodney, are you new to our community? Well, anyway, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, given that it was rainy today, I'm surprised we have a brown hat. Can I try to block off? Yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was all messed up. So awesome. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.